And good morning, everyone. <laughs> I am excited. Finally, we are meeting. And uh, welcome to Nigeria. For those of us that were with us last night, it was a it was a great meeting, and I will repeat it again. We are so excited that after nearly three years, we are here again. And, um, you know, the exciting thing is that we are almost a decade. Next Gen is like 10 years old or nearly 10 years. So it's been a 10 years of your hard work, your 10 years of your, you know, greed, 10 years of pushing against the tide. You know, there are a lot of things that are working contrary to the way you want things to go, especially the last pandemic. But all of us are here. We are grateful to God that we are all alive. Nobody was lost. Nobody. We had some stories about a few, you know, people caught COVID, but it just did not advance. And uh, we are so, I mean, it's, not, it's, it's, it's nothing to take for granted. We shouldn't take it for granted that uh, we're able to come through this period and we are all together again like Richard said we are here we're going to make merry we're going to rejoice and we're going to celebrate you for all the good work you have done over the years so I want you to appreciate yourself just clap for yourself don't be shy clap for yourself laugh thank you for the hard work you've done for 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 the cassava world for the people who depend on our crop for the people who whose livelihoods depend on this crop who make money who make their food from the crop and it is a result of your hard work so i really celebrate you um please once again don't get don't think i'm taking it too much clap clap for yourself it's for yourself thank you it's been 10 years of impact 10 years of impact that you've been through and uh, Kenan asked me to give a 15 minute talk of the 10 years impact I don't know how that is possible but let's make a try so <laughs> there's a there's something that we're going to is it ready do we have the hard copies of the impact stories ready we can also distribute it um, across so people can have it. You know, it's just a summary of the things you've done over the years. So I'm going to give a talk um, that tries to mimic that. Remember, this is you and your organization in several places. Remember our mission statement to empower farmers through innovative, sustainable cassava breeding. And um, all the points there represent somebody uh, uh, in the room and uh, even partners across Africa. You know, um, the pandemic came and we thought that that was the worst thing that could happen to Africa, um, but it wasn't the worst thing. Um, some other thing came and happened in far away in the eastern block of the world, um, Ukraine, Russia war. And what it m made happen was that the cost of food, the prices of food increased and flour was a big deal. And, um, you know, we came again that cassava is the alternative. Cassava is, a, is, is, is something that we can all depend on to, to mitigate the, um, the, the rising food prices and, and be able to secure our continent, Africa. So we made an opinion piece in The Guardian a few months ago that cassava offers a path for Africa to become less reliant on wheat imports, and that's by f flour substitution in our food system. And that was really well received, and I think we should not lose sight of this. So when people say cassava, who eats cassava? Cassava, everybody can eat cassava. It doesn't matter where in the world you are, because you convert it to flour, you can use it to substitute for your wheat. And that opens up a new market for African cassava farmers. And our role is to ensure that the farmers are able to benefit from that market. It's an open market. So let's go to the work you have done over the years. I think we started with um, defining the product profiles or the market segments for cassava, and we have for the processed granulated use, uh, fresh use, uh, fresh market use, or biofortified one, and the one for industry. But I can say it goes in that order, um, not deliberate priority, but that's how it has been, Make it, maybe it's demand-driven uh, prioritization that we've had for Africa. Um, 
I know that the uh, South Americans do have theirs too, for Colombia, for Brazil. I didn't represent those here, but I just wanted to use this as an example to show that we have things. Remember, our core, the core of our breeding is in genomic selection, and um, we, we've been able to make progress over the years. At least we've been able to have the time, the cycle time for breeding cassava. Um, that is a big deal. Uh, so we don't have to say that cassava takes a long time anymore. This project and the tools that we've deployed has been able to solve that. Um, we've also been able to build capacity in our breeding programs in the use of, a, a, of genomic selection to rapidly improve our populations. And you see the number of cycles that has, been go that, that has happened in the different uh, partner countries and the organizations that have done that. We've also been able to hasten the, uh, the uh, and, and ensure that we have um, flowering in the, in the cassava uh, genotypes or varieties that don't normally flower. And we've been able to increase as many as 15 times the, t uh, the, the amount of um, uh, fruit and flower that we can produce. Um, we also have the digital ecosystem that we've been able to uh, develop and made it, you know, is routinely used now in cassava breeding by everybody. And I believe that this is a, the largest cassava breeding group that you can get in the world today. So um, I'm glad to say that Cassava Base has been able to do that. We have over, we have nearly 1,500 um, users from 24 programs, um, 18 million phenotypes. Uh, half a million accessions, um, and, the, and the count goes on. But I, I, I think the growth of cassava base is commendable. Um, cassava base is the only database um, that has genotype data. We have a lot of SNP data there. Um, other, other databases do not have it, and so that's why we are still sticking with breed base and cassava, uh, cassava base. We have better understanding of our trade genetics. Um, these are studies that we've done. We have, um, developed, we have developed a hub map of 20 million SNPs, uh, um, GWAS of numerous traits, uh, practical haplotype graph, and, and so on and so forth. We have like a routinely genotype uh, over 40,000 accessions over the years, and that's like 4,000 per uh, year if you say stretch it averagely over the 10 years. And you see, we've done traits of res uh, the resilience traits like disease and, and, and pest resistance, nutrition, and root quality traits. We have paid serious attention to the viruses, um, cassava mosaic virus and also the bacteria, uh, uh, no, sorry, the brown streak disease, vir brown streak disease caused by the uh, brown streak virus. And uh, we have high throughput screening methodologies um, established now and in use, new sources of resistance, and we've done some in intercontinental transfers and has been able to help to introduce CMD resistance in Southeast Asia. Um, we've been able to use the uh, Citizen science, you know, is new t um, uh, methods to uh, do uh, a variety uh, evaluation. You know, one of the results, one of the fruits of this work is at Nigeria today. I'm happy that the the uh, the person responsible for variety release committee in Nigeria is in the hall. Nigeria as of today has adopted tricot as a as a as a. <laughs> thank you. As a pre-release method, as a pre-release method for um, uh, uh, on-farm evaluation or participatory evaluation of new varieties, and that replaces the on-farm, the classical on-farm that we were using. This is very important for us. So we have tricot and all the other methodologies um, in place. Um, thanks to RTB Foods, Dominique and his colleagues, we've been able to increase. Um, attention on root quality traits, in, in introducing this into our selection matrix or selection indices. This is this is important thing that has happened. We've been also we've also been able to do formal product life cycle and stage management um, adopted, as especially in two day, on Wednesday this week we'll be having our pro, pro, uh, pro product advancement meeting. Um, that we've been having since 2020. So we had the first one from next year in 2020 and the second one in 2021, and we are having one on Wednesday you know, for three consecutive years. Um, this is a result of the work that we 
have been doing and how we've engaged with excellence in breeding and other partners. Um, one important work that we've done in the last um, one year is uh, uh, scaling, uh, call it scalable management of um, the pro product management for cassava, and we're able to operationalize it in our breeding programs, not just at IITA, but also in the national programs. We've been able to develop um, uh, product um, crop calendars for each uh, sub-region. We've been able to standardize roles for product advancement meetings and uh, decision rights. For example, this crop ad cassava advancement calendar for Africa indicates where product advancement meeting and when it should happen. And this is important thing, an important tool that has come out of this project. Uh, I'm running because of time. And we, we have also been able to map the uh, CG is now a, 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 a mapping that involves both CG and NAS, where you have from stage zero to stage seven in the, pro in the cassava uh, pipeline process, clearly mapped now. Um, the last mile delivery, we have five varieties released in Nigeria. You will be seeing that on Thursday during the field um, visit, field tour. Um, four of those varieties were developed by, from genomic selection, and um, they were also uh, released according to uh, product profiles, so they are not the same product profile, and this is the first time that is happening. Um, we have three in Uganda and another three in Tanzania. I bet the one in Uganda is for the next, is it in October? Or where's Robert? Is it in October that is happening? Or, and, and the one in Tanzania is early 2023, I understand. So we've made progress, and I think Brazil also has theirs coming on. Um, when you deliver, the, when you release the varieties, you need to deliver, make sure it gets to the farmers, to the last person. And so we've worked with our partners, uh, Basics, a seed project, and the, and the seed companies that were developed, new seed companies, to make this available to farmers in Nigeria. One, thing, one, one of the things I take pride in is this slide, where we show the number of students we have trained in the last 10 years. Look at the one in yellow. So you see that nearly 40 students, 40 graduate students in plant breeding has been trained in Africa. And this is very important for us as um, a project because you see some of them in this room. In fact, all the three people are in this room working very hard for their countries or for the international center where they are engaged, but all for Africa. So in the spirit, of, thank you, in the spirit of none left behind, we have this community of practice. Um, this is very important because it has a future. So even when we don't fund every uh, cassava program, we try to make sure that those that are funded are spoking the hub. That, you know, the bicycle wheel, the spoke and the hub. So we use that to make this happen. So all the, le all the learnings, all the tools developed, we leverage every, every other country that is working on cassava leverages on it. So you have those number of countries and the things we do. We share learnings, we visit um, Uganda. Nakri just visited Tari a few weeks ago, and that is a peer-to-peer -peer learning that we're talking about. Save jam plasma exchange and support them in field management and trial design. Gabi and Prasad just came back two days ago from training all over Africa. They went to Rwanda, they went to Cote d'Ivoire, they went to Zambia. Did you go to Sierra Leone? It was, okay, you didn't get to Sierra Leone, but you went to like three or four countries to train them on cassava base, to train them on quality management and plot craft, and, and that's very important for us. Um, so I go to the quality champions. Uh, it's a quality management system of the project, making sure that all our SOPs are developed and um, data is collected, efficiently manage the breeding data and everything, just to ensure that we improve quality, accuracy, and we have quality champions. Each, each uh, participating um, uh, partner has a quality champion or has quality champions attached to them to ensure that the work is really done. Um, why is NextGen a successful mod model? We are cohesive, we see the big picture, we treat each other as equals, we grew together with excellence in breeding. We have a stellar external advisors and they focus a lot on quality control and they helped us through the process. Thank you, um, the, uh, our advisors. Maria, is, he, is she here? Let us, thank, let us thank them again, our advisors. Thank you for your help. Um, so 
we have a future. We believe we are the flagship program. But, uh, you know, today we are moving forward. And you are going to hear from the next speakers on the things we need to do. We need to model. Um, we are modeling this new 1CG RTB breeding. And you will see why we, I said that. Um, we, we, we provide the model. Let me, let me not say more on that. So what are our take-home lessons? When, with the right tools, every challenging crop will respond effectively to selection. We have made great strides in modernizing breeding. Um, we, we will continue to innovate and help the smallholder. But you know, we, as, we can take pride that we are the largest cassava breeding network in the world. And so we have, the opportunities are large. We can collaborate and do a lot of things together. Um, how are we moving forward? This slide is important for anybody, everybody who is a member of NextGen in the room. How is NextGen aligning to the new way, the new uh, path that we're taking? So we've been able to map NextGen and align it with all the 1CG um, accelerated breeding initiative is what ABI means. We've been able to align uh, and see what we are currently doing. So NextGen was able to see the future five years ago or six years ago and was able to um, map what the 1CG has mapped, uh, has decided to do. We called it different names, but it came out with different names. So you see the last column is what is, is really representing what the 1CG wants to do. So in some ways, we modeled it and it's very good for us So be, because we already inside it and this is just making it easier for us to work I, I won't go into detail with that but we need to work on um product profiles our market segments defined you know it's a continuous process continuous improvement is what the epac tells us to keep doing scalable management system for market oriented a variety development in cassava uh, we need to do that keep doing that strengthen the the already established COPP, but now it will be called the CGI NAS breeding or testing network. Um, build on um, and implement the one CG work packages like I showed you earlier to in, in continue continuously have the um, higher genetic gain, uh, gains that we, we've been working on using genomic selection and all the other tools. Um, we will continue to give attention to viruses and uh, diseases in general, and we will continue to ensure that tricot is mainstreamed or any other tool, it doesn't have to be tricot, any other thing, uh, method that helps us to test our varieties. Um, our learnings is that, I mentioned our learnings before, so let me not get into them. And, uh, but it's good to look at this slide because that helps us to, to guide us as we move forward in the process with the 1CG RTB. I'm trying not to talk too much because other people are going to discuss that as we go. And before the end of the meeting, annual meeting, we'll be able to have a clearer picture of how, where things are. Um, all the work were done by you, so I want to celebrate you again, and I want to 